Hello and welcome to another of Turtleton's tutorials. Today we're going to be looking at Minecraft pistons and their use in making a simple and improved combination lock. Getting straight into things, here we have a very basic concept of redstone. Redstone power will propagate through a single block and be picked up on the opposite side by a single redstone repeater, allowing it to continue its path. If you remove the block, however, the circuit's broken and the redstone repeater will not receive the power. Similarly, replacing the wall block with a glass block won't allow the power from the redstone torch to continue through the circuit. But replacing it again with your wall block or any other block will allow the power to transpose. Now, here we have the exact same setup, but we have a piston controlling our wall block and a switch, which effectively allows us to control the output. This is pretty much going to be our basic mechanic for our combination lock. Okay, so here it is. So we have two pistons now, you can see how they're set up, and we have a door which is currently open. Now, currently the whole system is set to the unlock state, because we have the correct entry code. However, if we get one of these inputs wrong, then the door will close. Again, if we get them both wrong, of course the door will still be closed. Simply because the power is not propagating through the circuit. Now, this is quite a good system, but it's easily susceptible to brute force attacks, whereby you can toggle the switches over and over again until you get the right combination. One method of trying to combat this type of illegal entry is to use push buttons in place of levers. Now this might look a little bit complicated, but essentially we have the same setup. We have our pistons, and we have our wall blocks, and we have our route through for the redstone to follow up to our door. The difference now is that when we press these buttons, the piston will retract. So as you can see here, I've got the correct code as the wall is propagating through. But if I were to press the other button, well, the glass block would be in the way and it would stop us from entering the door. Now again, if I try and re-attempt this passcode, then I'm going to fail, because no amount of pressing this button is actually going to cause this blue block to come back, because it's a regular piston and not a sticky piston like in the earlier examples. So, here we have a reset button, which is simply routed along this red section of wall up to these two pistons here. And they'll reset our series of pistons and allow us to re-attempt our code. Admittedly, having only two inputs isn't going to make it very difficult for anyone to try and crack this code. But as you add more pistons, it becomes exponentially more difficult for anyone to try and brute force this method. Now, here we have the full example, where we have a series of five buttons and one reset button. And our currently locked door. Now, I've left myself a little reminder here so I can easily get back in. And you can see the door is unlocked. However, if I had guessed any other code, the door would still be closed. So I'd have to run all the way back here, reset the button, and have another attempt. Uh, another big advantage of this over the previous methods is that I have no way of knowing that pressing this button has now made it physically impossible for me to get the code correct. So, I can only hit these two buttons, and attempting any of the other buttons means that I'm forced to go back to hit the reset button to try all over again. Okay, now that I can get through the door, you'll be able to see the full locking mechanism. Now, you'll see it's very similar to the other designs. I've raised the switches a little bit, just to make them a little bit easier to see. And we're currently all completely lined up with our setup. Now, I've added a couple of things, like this switch here. This means that if I come into the room and I don't want anyone to follow me in, I can hit this lever and the door will be locked permanently, regardless of the code entered. 
Also, I've given myself an easy restart button, which is just linked to this row of reset pistons, which means I don't have to run back all the way to get the switch over there if I want to reset the door lock. So, the final thing I've added is a push button right next to the door. This means I can go ahead and hit the reset button and I can come out at any time I like, knowing that the door will be locked behind me. Now, it's worth commenting that this whole system has a large advantage over simply using a set of logic gates. Logic gates can be a little difficult to understand at times, and to recreate this system purely using AND gates would require a single AND gate for every two inputs, and then for every two subsequent inputs created from that AND gate. And there are the additional benefits in this system, in that with a logic gate system, there is a time for the signal to propagate through as it's calculated. Plus, with creating logic gates, you're going to be requiring a lot more space. The other big benefit of using pistons is that if somebody figures out my passcode and I want to change it, I can do it relatively quickly just by changing over the glass block and the wall block. But to do this in logic gates requires a little more tact. Well, this has been Turtleton's Tutorials. Thank you for watching the video, and if you'd like to watch any of my others, please feel free to click on my channel, and have a gander.